Uh, <laughs> Welcome to the Bright Lights of the UFC. How excited yeah. are you, man, for real? Because obviously you were doing great things in other organizations, yeah. but and, and we know you kind of called it quits a year ago. But yeah. but this was uh, this was always the dream, and now it's the reality. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, when I retired in the last November, I meant it, and uh, obviously it's. I think it was. I don't remember. It was October, end of October, early November this year. Um, I got traded, so I got the opportunity to fight those guys who ranked above me and prove how good I am. How much of that uh, that was going on behind the scenes did you know about as it was happening, or were you um, out about it the same way we were? No, there, there was a few other opportunities while during my retirement of maybe you know something working out where I would get to fight someone who's ranked above me. Uh, you know, it kind of fell through and. For a while, there was just nothing. You know, Chachi and I, one, we kept in touch just about, about other stuff, really, not even about fighting. Uh, and then one day, he called me up and said, hey, do you, how about we trade you? And I'm like, uh, I, you could do that? You know, he's like, that, that's the thing? And he said, yeah. Called me back a couple weeks later, and he said, hey, you're traded. I'm like, what the? Was that the you know? only way you were gonna do this is if you were able to come to the UFC and, and really If I was, the only way I was gonna fight again is if I was able to fight someone who's ranked in the top five. You know, and I said, to prove I'm the best. And so. Like I said, there was a few other avenues that we were trying to make that happen, um, and this was the one that worked out. Were you surprised that TJ was on the other end, uh, other end of the trade? No, not at all. I mean, uh, Matt Hume, who's the match favorite for one championship, is DJ's coach. They're really close. And, um, so I guess I kind of knew of DJ's unhappiness for a while, if that makes sense. So, yeah, when that was in the end, I mean, it was kind of like, hey, you know, it's, um, what would be the right term here? It's kind of a validation of how good I am. I mean, they fucking traded the best, well, I'll say the best fighter of all time. I was gonna say the best flyweight, but it, how many title defenses do you have, 11 or 12? I mean, literally that's possibly the best UFC champion of all time. They traded him for me. So, you know, that that in itself is validation that they see the value in me. What do you think about now the flyweights might not have a home in the UFC if you have that trade? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of been, obviously that's been rumored uh, for a long time. But they just made that Dustin Ortiz and uh, Benavidez. Joe Benavidez today. So I, I don't know. I still don't know if I should believe that. Do you believe it? Uh, I did for a while. I don't know anymore. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I did for a while. I don't know anymore. Obviously, one championship would be more than happy to pick some of those guys up. Like they got DJ. Um, and, you know, when you look at it, really, it by the, strictly by the numbers. You know, at the lightweight, welterweight, there's over 100 fighters in both divisions. It's just the UFC, right? And then if you go, you know, on the extremes, right? It's a bell curve. The flyweights, there's like 30. The heavyweights, there's like 30. And so obviously, the majority of the people are middleweights and welterweights, or sorry, lightweights and welterweights. So everyone's packed in the middle. So I mean, there just aren't as many small guys. It, that's just how it is. You know, that's life. I mean, um, wrestling has minimum weight classes too. It's like, I have all kinds of high school kids. Minimum weight class is 106 and they weigh 94 pounds. Yeah, freaking sucks. That's life. Life sucks sometimes. Yeah. Are you yourself a little surprised that actually finally happened? Um, you know, when I retired, I was telling the story the other day. I remember I interviewed to be the Badgers head coach for wrestling last, I think it was March or uh, April, maybe March. I don't remember when. But I remember leaving the parking lot and there was like two people on my shoulder. And one was saying, well, thank God you didn't get the job because if, you know, if something were to happen, then you could fight again. And if, if I got the job, then I wouldn't. And I remember the guy on my other shoulder was saying, you dumbass, you're, you're retired. You're never gonna fight again. Like, you should've got this damn job. And so, you know, it's like, I think parts of me thought I would fight again, and parts of me thought there's just no way it's gonna happen. So this fight against Robbie Lawler yeah. was scheduled for January in Anaheim. Yes. UFC 233, it's delayed to 235 yeah. in March. How does that, does that change anything? Does that affect the fight? Um, yeah, you know, when I, uh, when I look at it from, I was really pissed when it happened. So I was ready, and I, I even volunteered to made it against Robbie in Brooklyn. Um, and then they, then so then Robbie said no. So then they were forced to move Benavides Henry for that first ESPN card. And so then they were looking for a main event. I volunteered to fight Colby. I volunteered to fight Usman. And they're so scared, right? They're making, I mean, Usman is like the ultimate hypocrite, and he's so dumb. He, he can't put his sentences together. He realized like, I'm not a hypocrite. I said earn your shot. Well, no, no, no. That's exactly why I said you're a hypocrite. Because that's literally what Colby said to you. And it's like, and then they pretend they don't hear me, like. They, despite the fact that they've been in the UFC for four or five years, despite the fact that they're, Colby won an interim and Usman's pushing, their social media followings are still minuscule compared to mine, despite Colby running this stupid ass MAGA gimmick, despite uh, Marty from Nebraska trying to act like he's Kamaru. Um, and so they're just uninter uninteresting people. 
So I, I volunteered to fight either of them to save the Anaheim card, and both of them said no. And that's just what it comes down to. And I don't know if anyone else in the public said that, but that's the freaking truth. Um, so when they told me it was moved back, I said, damn it. I was kind of pissed. I thought about, like, well, you know what? It's probably good. I was going from retirement to in the cage in nine weeks. I mean, I was retired. I, wa I wasn't training. So going from retirement to in the cage in nine weeks, that's pretty quick. But I had my mind set on that's what I was going to do. And so now that I have a little more time, it is probably like when I look at it from a, you know, looking down, that's probably better for me. When, it's probably a lot better. When did you actually find out the card had been canceled? Uh, third Wednesday or third, it was like an hour before they announced it. I got a call and said, hey, we're going to move you to March 2nd. And I said, okay, that, that's fine. Um, and obviously, Robbie's still the opponent. I don't care. Let's go. How much conversation have you had with um, Dana since this all happened? Okay. Almost none. Negligible. Uh, I've talked to Hunter Campbell quite a bit, but uh, not Dana. I mean, he's, he said some stuff about you in the past. It's not as bad as he said about other people. Sure. But he's been critical. Absolutely. Now that you're here, is it like water under the bridge? I mean, what's that conversation going to be like? No, I, th th I think I think when one person and another person have a disagreement, the thing you need to do, if you want to have respect for each other, is sit down and have that conversation. We haven't been able to do that so far. He said nice things about the media, but that's also probably because I volunteered to do the dirty work. I volunteered to switch be the main event against Robbie. Robbie said no. I volunteered to fight Marty from Nebraska. I volunteered to fight dumb Colby. Um, and so he sees in the value of what I'm doing is now he's being nice. It's whatever though, but you know, what has happened in the past doesn't just go away. It's not just, and I think, you know, because of his position, he thinks that that's how it goes. And it's, listen, I'm here to fight people in the cage. I'm not here to be anyone's best friend. And if we've developed friendship because of that, that's fine. But I'm here to fight people in the cage. Do you feel like some of the stuff he said in the past was only because you weren't here? and Or do you think he really uh, believed some of it? I'm sure to a certain extent he believed it. I mean, it had, a, it had kernels of truth in them. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there, there was a lot of BS in there. I mean, you know, I mean, a few of them were just told you that he needs more experience. I mean, that's, you know, that one was like the funniest one of them all. Um, yeah, so a lot of them were BS. Did you expect to sit down with Dana you know, by now? Well, I approached him in New York and said, let's go sit down. Let's talk for 10 minutes. Let's get rid of this shit, you know? Did you do so, it? Nah, he's busy. He's going to do something. I mean, you've certainly been around him enough times over yeah. the years when you're yeah. in your corner and guys and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. He doesn't see the value in it. It's fine. Kamaru said he had signed a bout agreement to fight Tyron. Yeah. You're obviously close to Tyron. Was yeah. there any truth to that at all? I, I believe he has. I don't know that Tyron decided to fight him. Tyron wants to fight Colby. And honestly, Colby and Tyron's the one that makes sense. That's going to sell better than Marty from Nebraska versus Tyron. Marty from Nebraska's got 30,000 Twitter followers. No one, Literally, no one knows who he is. He's acting like he's this big deal. He doesn't have a following. People don't know who he is. You can say, I fought 12 times in the UFC or whatever. You're not interesting. People don't know who you are. You're freaking... The most interesting thing that's happened to you is me call you Marty from Nebraska. So Colby, you said, is doing the MAGA gimmick, as you said. Yeah, it's pathetic. Uh, Tyron has represented Ferguson, Missouri, very well. In the Absolutely. Past. That right there, on paper, there's a big, yeah. there's a lot of emotions between there. Are you worried it might go too far? No. To? We fight in a cage. Are you on drugs? <laughs> I mean, we get in a cage and try to hurt each other. How? What's too far? I, I mean, I maybe are we are we gonna give him swords or something? Well, I guess like you saw happen at 229 <laughs> after the fight. When they hopped the cage. Yeah, that was awesome when Khabib yeah. almost beat up Drake and then little wimpy Dylan Danis, yeah, and he was like, yeah. That, that, that was fantastic. No, listen, we fight in the cage. Like, wait, 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 I mean, you gave him swords, maybe I'd say, okay, let's take the swords away and let him settle this. Um, you know what? Colby is, he's so dumb, he has to pick the lowest common denominator. It's like, I can't get people interested in me, so I have to throw this MAGA gimmick out there because that inherently makes people upset, right? And besides that, you know, Tyron and I, we're politically opposed to each other, right? But we're two adults who respect each other, who can have dissenting opinions on stuff and still get along really well and still respect each other and still be really good friends. Because listen, I guarantee you, you don't politically see the same exact way as every single one of your friends. And if you do, you're living in this tiny little vacuum that's gonna make you a, a really weird, unique human being. So we should be friends with people who are politically opposed to. We should be friends with people we don't have the same values as. That's what makes us unique, you know? Well, what do you think about the fans, like, on, on both sides? Like, one's obviously going to side yeah. with Colby, the other's going to side Sure. Do you think that could get a little too far when the fans get involved? No. What, uh, what are we giving the fans swords now, too? I don't care if these drunk fans get in fights in the crowd. Who cares? You're saying no. that you and Tyron are political? Yeah, guys, absolutely. So you can't just unfriend each other on Facebook because that's how it goes No, we love each other. We talk about it. It's fine, you know? It's like... 
man, if I, if I could only be friends with people I had the pl same political ideology as, damn, I'd be screwed. I only have I only have like 14 friends because I got some really unique ones. Speaking uh, of Tyron, man, you got you, got you, you got yeah. Tyron, you got Chandler, who just was Bell yeah. last night. What the hell is going on in Missouri, man? I mean, you guys are all super high. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, college wrestling produces good fighters. Obviously, Tyrone was the first one from Mizzou to get into that. You know, I followed, Chandler followed. Um, but I think that's all it is. You know, you know, there's, you know, Mizzou is obviously having a lot of success. There's other colleges. You know, Oklahoma State's had a lot of success. Johnny and Johnny, which he was successful. Like a little, there's a little bump there. And then Usada came and got him. Um, but uh, you know, Daniels had a lot of success. There's been other people. Um, so Arizona State had a lot of really good fighters. Kane, Bader, CB. There's a lot of people there. With one championship, weight class changed a few yeah. years ago. You've been fighting recently closer to 185, right? I've been fighting, yeah. That's what, Around yeah. So I, the, the weight I weighed when I fought one championship, the weight I weighed to make 170 was the exact same thing. There's, there's literally no difference at all. Um, so I usually wa uh, you cut the water weight, if you will, from 183 to 185, somewhere in there. And so one championship, you had to piss hydrate and be 185 or under. Um, so it's, it's the same thing. Talk, talk, talk a little bit about Robbie as an opponent. I mean, he's a guy, obviously, whose yeah. durability is there and the kind of the, the, the guy who's zombie and walks through everything and doesn't go away. Well, he gets choked, though. Sure. Yeah. So that, is, he didn't walk through those. Is that, uh, is that your plan? Kind yes. Of, as, as you... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Put my hands on him, get him tired, wear him out, beat him up, choke him out, all that good stuff. Can you make 165? Yes. So yeah. if, if they added that division, you I'll be the 165 pound champion by the end of 2019. Oh, wow. Yes. Hey guys, thank you. Oh, that's, I was having fun over here. Colby sucks, Marty from Nebraska sucks, I'm out. <laughs>